uh, starting my business. For those of you who don't know me, if you haven't read or seen the video where Brandon interviewed me, I'm Richard Zilka. I'm, I'm one of the instructors on the channel. And I also run an appliance service business as well as I am a teacher at a vocational school, how to teach appliance repair. I have been teaching at that school now for going on my 33rd year teaching. And... Um, the business is now going on its 14th year, uh, my current business, and I know Brandon's business is scaled to a different size, and he's uh, working on growing his business, but I went from me and my partner starting the business about 13, 14 years ago to now running a successful business covering uh, about half the state of Florida with 26 trucks on the road, so I'm going to give you guys some of my experiences, show you some of the things I've learned and some of the things that uh, I had to do to make my business successful. And I will be continuing this class as an open class for everyone um, in the future too. Uh, I won't be able to hold it as many during the week only because I teach at night at my regular school. And uh, today's Veterans Day and there's no school, so that's why I'm able to teach. So I'm just going to jump right into it. Anybody else that comes in, I'll just let them in the room as we go. Again, if you have any questions, if you're not familiar with this uh, meat kind of software here, you have a microphone there that has a little line through it. You'd have to tap on the microphone and say unmute if you have any questions. Uh, let's... Let's go to the first slide here. Um, I have some live stuff to show you as well as some slides that I put together. Running your own business. Some of the things you have to do before you actually have your business is you have to, you have to ask yourself some questions and make a few decisions. It's good to start with an idea of what you plan to do. When you start a business, sometimes it isn't always what you planned it to do because that's the way it went. But it is good to have some sort of idea of what you want to do and uh, how, you want, how you want to run that business. So uh, a couple of things I put here is to start a business, questions to ask before you jump into your own business. Like first thing is just picking out a company name. Um, you want a name that customers are going to associate with what it is you do. Uh, if your last name is Johnson's and you, you call it Johnson Services, nobody knows what Johnson Services is. They don't know it's an appliance company, an air conditioning company, whatever. So you have to try to think of a name that would not only be a catchy name, but also a name that would associate you with the type of business you run. And after you do that, you also have to go and make sure that that name isn't already registered by someone else as an active business. And I have some screenshots on the next slide, and I'll show you that. The next thing is is a, a, a cor the type of corporation you want to run. Again, I'm not going real deep into all this because I have a lot of things to show you guys, and I'm going to try to cover it in about an hour, an hour and a half long. Um, so again, if you have questions, jump in and answer questions. But I'm going to touch on some stuff here, and then if you want me to go deeper into it, I will. Uh, type of corporation. It's very good when you're starting a business is to create a corporation. Uh, what that sort of does, is, especially in the state of Florida, is liability issues. If you go to someone's house and you break a water pipe or you cause damage, uh, causes the house to go on fire or something like that, as a corporation... What that does is limit it, it limits the liability that you personally owe. In other words, if they want to sue your company, you'll have insurance for that. But if you're not a corporation, if you just created a business like you, any, any plain business, they can go after your personal assets. They can sue you for a lien on your home. They can sue you for uh, your personal vehicle. They can go after you if you don't have enough money to pay for the damages that they have. Uh, waste one, I'm going to just uh, mute your microphone, and if you have to say anything, just 
you know, unmute it. Thank you. Um, so uh, you have to figure out what type of corporation, and I'm not going to go to the different types, uh, but find out what type of corporation works for you, and you have to apply for that corporation with the state um, to get them to approve that. The next is your investment. Your investment is how much money do you have to start running your business? Do you have a small amount of money? Do you have some cash saved up? If you really don't have any good startup money where you're going to buy a bunch of tools, you're going to buy a, a, a fancy truck, you're going to buy uniforms, you're going to buy all this stuff, your investment doesn't have to be that great, but your business is going to start off almost like you're doing side jobs. And you're going to have to start saving money from those individual jobs so you can save up enough money so you can have a van that has your company logo and your company name on it. You have uniforms that match. And you have a lot of things that a business needs to run. And in the next screen, I'm going to go over all those items. Also is the time you have to run your business. Uh, I was lucky in starting my business. It's called RR Appliance Services. The two R's is my name's Richard and my appliance partner is Robert. He was one of my students and as upon graduating, graduating the class, he says, let's start a business. Now, I'm a full-time teacher and I was, I was one then too. And I told him, I said, listen, I'm, I'm teaching more than 40 hours a week. I don't have time to run service calls because basically him and I starting the business would mean we'd have to run the calls. Um, and he approached me by saying, listen, I'll do the calls. You know, I need you for your experience. And I said, you're going to do the work and you just want my experience and we're 50-50 partners? Okay, that sounds like it's going to work for me and that's how it started with us. Um, but he was a firefighter and you know, you work 24 hours and you got two or three days off before you work again. So he had the time to run service calls during the day. So you have to look at the time. If you have another job, it's very hard for you guys, if you don't have enough money saved up, to quit the job you're doing and start a brand new business. And you got bills to pay. You got rent or mortgage, car payments, family, groceries, uh, electric bill, cable bill, you have all these bills to pay. And, you know, you have to really sit down and think, what can I afford? What can I do? And when you do go into this business, you have to put 100% effort into saying, I'm going to make this thing work. And it's going to happen. And you, if you don't have the faith in you say, well, I don't know if it's going to work. You know, you're setting yourself up for failure just to start off with. And the type of business that you, you want to have. Do you want to just do washers and dryers? Or are you going to do all appliances? Are you going to do appliances and air conditioning? What type of business you want? Now I put here pros and cons. Does anybody have an, any pros that they could think of um, if they started their own business? What, what things do you think um, would be advantageous if you started your own business? Anybody have any ideas? How about no boss? How about... Uh, time, flexibility. Flexibility, time. Flex flexible. Flexible. Mm -hmm. um, like, you can schedule the calls yeah. when you want. So, like, if you do have a business, you could go after five and run one or two calls a day till you build up your customer base. You know, um, not having a boss. Sometimes, you know, People don't mind their job, but when they got their boss involved, then they hate their job, you know, and uh, you have to find uh, things that, you know, are going to matter to you. What about money? If you have your own business, hopefully you're making yes. more, you're going to make more money doing your own business than, um, you know, working for somebody getting paid $10, $15 an hour. I have a former student who called me uh, about two weeks ago, and it was a, it was about seven eight o'clock at night. I was in school, so I put him on speaker. He says, "Who said you don't make money in this job?" And I'm like, "What are you talking about?" He says, "Man, I just got fixed in this refrigerator. Yeah, it took me two and a half hours to put this evaporator and this compressor in, but I I made five hundred dollars on this job in two and a half hours." 
Some people yeah. lucky, some people lucky if they make five hundred dollars in a week. Um, you know, so if you could do a couple of jobs a day, you'd be surprised how much money you can make. And we'll discuss that uh, in the future here. What are the cons if you have start your own business? Crazy. Easy. <laughs> you have to make money. If you don't make money, your business is going to fold. You got to pay bills. You got to pay everything. So having to make money is the worst con of all because if you don't have work and you're looking over your shoulder trying to figure out how you're going to pay, that's that's going to be difficult. Um, a lot of people are concerned that they don't have insurance. Uh, did I spell that right? I'm sure. No, insurance. You, you, yes. don't, you don't have insurance uh, if you leave. What about time? Oh, wait a minute. I put time up top there, and I'm putting time in here as far as uh, pros and cons. The pros is you can schedule those calls whenever you want. The negative is uh, if you're sick or you want to go on vacation with your family or, or your girlfriend or your wife or something like that, uh, you know, if you got calls scheduled, sometimes it's hard for you to take off. People are waiting for you to fix their fridge. They got no food or they can't wash their clothes. So being a one-man business is very difficult or even being the owner of a business and having technicians work for you what happens to your business when you're away? What if you're ill? What if you're, you know, God forbid this co this COVID thing and you get sick from COVID and you're in the hospital for two weeks? What happens to your business when you're not there? So before you even start a business, these are the kinds of questions you have to ask yourself and you have to actually create what they call a business plan. You need to write these questions down and you need to say, okay, I know I got to do this. I know I got to do that. And these are the things that's important to me to start a business. Has anybody got any questions on this before I go to the next screen? No? No, so far. Okay. What you need to start a business. Um, in the bottom there is a picture of some of my vehicles. I have employees all over the state of Florida, so... This is only, uh, see, I got 26 trucks, and there's only like five in that picture right there. Um, that is outside my current office, and the guys are there in the morning picking up their parts. But let's let's look at what, what you need to start a business. You have to file with the state of corporation. I took a screenshot of the Florida Division of Corporations, and here's where the paperwork is for Florida. You'd have to search your own individual state and find out where you get the application. There are some people that will charge you a small fee like 200 bucks and they'll fill the paperwork out and mail it for you but they're just filling out an application. Before you pay someone else to do this, see if you can find it for free. Download the application and mail it in to start your own corporation. It's cheaper than paying some, some other company to give you that paper, say, fill it, fill this out, give it to me, and I'm going to mail it in for 250 bucks. So you want to get a, a file of corporation with the state. You need to obtain liability insurance. Liability insurance is good, but you have to, you have to take care of it. Liability insurance is if you go in someone's house and you cause any damage or someone gets hurt or from negligence or whatever, if you don't have insurance, you're responsible for paying for that out of your pocket. Now, the one thing it is that I say you got to look out for that is if you have too many claims against it, they're going to drop you. So you have to do your best, and, and when you're working, you got to be safe. And if you have employees working for you, you have to basically you know, instill in them, listen, safety is important, not just for your health, but for the business as well. Um, not just liability insurance, but also vehicle insurance. I have employees that get, if they get too many tickets, uh, I, you know, the insurance company will, f will flag that person and they'll tell me, listen, uh, your insurance rates are going to go up or we're going to drop your insurance on your vehicles because of one employee. Now, you got to go to the employee and say, listen, you need to go to school and get rid of these points 
Or if you can't get rid of these points, I'm going to have to let you go because I can't insure my other guys. You can't have one person jeopardize your whole company and the insurance on your vehicles because of their driving habits. So when you hire employees, you need to express to them the importance of driving safely and, and obeying the law. Um, location. When I first started my business, we started with a home office. Um, I had a computer at home, and the software was on that computer, and both my partner and I could log into it remotely. That's good and bad. Having a home office, you don't have to pay additional money. And when you do your taxes, if you have a home office, if it's a certain percentage of the square footage of your home, it is a tax deduction on your taxes. But here's some of the issues with the home office. A power outage goes in my house. My computer shuts off. Now I have no access to my service calls if I'm out in the street running calls. So what do you do? You put a battery backup system on your computer. So if the power goes out, your computer stays on. But, that, but now if your internet goes out or, or, or cable goes down and you don't have connection to your computer, it is very difficult to get your customer's information, get your service calls, and, and do business remotely if you had to. So one of the things that we did is we did start with a home office. Then we moved to a physical warehouse with our computers, but eventually our software went into the cloud. And I will discuss the software in the next screen. Um, one of the softwares I use is called Rossware. And for a few extra dollars, they host the software for me. So through my cell phone, my computer, or anything with internet connection, I can access my software. Now, I'm logged into it, and I'm going to show you the software and show you some of the things that you can do with this software. Um, I'm not going to say that this is the one software that's the best, but I've been through a couple that did not do half of what this does. And this guy, Ross, uh, Glade Ross, who's the owner, he was a business owner for appliance repair. And he also started developing this software, and he's constantly improving and adding features for it. And, I, and, and I'll show you guys some of the things that um, you have to do. So you have to create a business license with your county. Once, once you file the corporation, you haven't really created the business. Okay. You just filed with the state that you're going to start a business. Then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go to your local county. Even when I had my home office, I went to the city hall of that area and I filled out a business license application. Now, one thing about the state of Florida, if you are a contractor like electrician, plumber, central air, jobs like that, carpenters, Jobs like that, when you work on something that's built into the home, like the electrical wiring or the plumbing in a home, you have to be a licensed contractor with the state. The regulations of running a business in the state of Florida as a licensed contractor is very difficult. You have to have a journeyman's license or some sort of license, uh, contractor's license, before you can even do this business. Appliance repair... I pay $75 a year with the county and I have my business. There is not as much restriction because when you fix appliances, they're just plugged into the wall. They're not considered permanent installations. I know some people argue about dishwashers and stuff, but they're still usually plugged in now where the older ones were hardwired. So that's plus or minus there. Um, now uh, filing a city license. So once you create your business license with the county, now you have to do one for the city. Like, I live in Miami-Dade County, Florida. So I had to go to Miami-Dade County, which has a bunch of smaller cities in it, and get a business license with them. My office is in the city of Hialeah, which is part of Dade County. So when I got the warehouse for my office and my, and my employees, I had to go to the city of Hialeah and get another business license to operate out of that warehouse. So now <laughs> you're, you're filing with the state, you're filing with the county, and you're filing with the city. The city had to send a fire inspector out, made sure that 
you know, I wasn't doing oil changes and something called derm, which they check to make sure that, you know, we're, we're you know, not harming the, the atmosphere by using oils and, you know, gasolines and everything else. But also, they want to make sure you have fire exit signs, you have fire extinguishers, and they go walk to your, your facility to make sure that you are uh, safe before they give you the okay that you can actually run the business out of that warehouse. Um, vehicle and parts. You don't have to have a fancy vehicle. When me and my partner first started the business, we both had pickup trucks, and we just had a fiberglass toenail cover on top. And we had plastic boxes with parts for washers, parts for refrigerators, and stuff like that. And we just used magnetic signs on the outside of our vehicles when we first started the business. And when I got home, I took the magnetic sign off, and it was my daily driver. So you don't have to go out and invest in a service van. But it is nice to have because when you pull up into someone's house and you have a branded vehicle... And the customer can recognize that vehicle. You know, if you look at the pictures of my vans, they all look the same. So someone might just get a glance of my vehicle, which they've seen before, and automatically in the back of the head, they already know the company's name. I'm sure you've probably seen some phone companies, cable companies, or electric electrical companies in your area that are doing work, and you recognize their vehicle as that company. You don't have to actually read the name. So, vehicles and parts. Carrying parts on your truck. I tell people, the more parts you have, the better, but you have to have the right parts. You have to build up your truck stock little by little. What we did when we first started, we became factory authorized for Frigidaire. Frigidaire and Marcon, who's our parts vendor, has a list of frequently used parts like everybody uses this defrost thermostat everybody uses this defrost timer everybody uses this infinite switch on the stove so me and my partner invested and bought two of each and put one of each on the truck and then a year later I see some of these parts have never been touched and you're like wow I just spent all this money on these parts and I'm not using them so when you put parts on your vehicles you have to Build up your truck stock little by little. And what I mean by that is you have to get to know your customers and your service area. I told you my office is in the city of Hialeah. That's a lower middle blue uh, blue collar worker in that area. And um, those people would have just the average washer and dryer in their home. Then I have another city not too far away called Doral or Weston where the football players, Miami Dolphin football players and Heat basketball players live in $5 million homes. They're not going to have the same washing machine in that house. So carrying truck stock for just the Frigidaire and not the Electrolux brands, which is the higher end brand of that company, you know, you have to pick and choose what parts you use. Does anybody have any idea of something that would say, Okay, uh, this is one of the parts I want to have on my truck. What what would gear you to making that decision of this is worth putting on my truck? Anybody got any ideas? Yes, wait. I would say based on the call that you handle, well, that will dictate the kind of part that you should carry with you. Well, yes and no. I th I look at it as... Listen, if you've replaced this part two, maybe three times a month, this is something that needs to be on your truck. So when you first start doing calls, we used to have like a separate list that my guys would carry. I tell them, listen, you know, if you guys want to get first time completes, and we'll talk about that as far as profitability. If you want to get first time complete, you want to have that part on your truck. That's when you're going to make your most money. If you go out to someone's house and you don't have that part, now you have to order it, and then you come back another day to complete the job, it took you two days to do that job where you could have been doing another new call on that second day and making more money. So what I told the techs, especially ones that work off of commission, because some of my guys are hourly and some are commission, uh, that you, know, you get paid when the job's done. 
So when you start changing parts, keep a little notebook and say, I changed this part, put the part number and a part description. And just start keeping the log in the book. You don't have to put the date you changed it. Just keep a list of it. And every now and then check it and say, wow, I've changed this part three times in the past month or two. This is something I want to buy an extra one and put it on my truck as truck stock. Now, remember, some of those truck stock parts will change over time as the manufacturer redesigns their machines. And five years later, their machines are nothing like what they were five years ago. So truck stock is important, but you have to build up your truck stock. You can't just get a list from somebody and say, oh, this is perfect. Thanks for the list. I'm going to put this on my truck and I'm going to be profitable. And I'm just going to say that we, la we wasted about two or $3,000 in parts when we first started that we never used. Luckily, we had a rapport with the company since the parts were in brand new condition and never opened. They took uh, about 30% of those parts back and gave us credit that we could use to buy other parts. So establish with your parts vendor and your local vendor that you want to establish with them that you want to to be able to have some sort of rapport where you can buy and return parts. Uh, our parts house, Marcon, has a sign, uh, electrical parts are not returnable because they don't want people to go in and buy a motor, buy a switch, and buy a control board and go to someone's house and install the control board and go back and say, I didn't need these two. You're just ordering a bunch of parts to see if you get it right. And if you take a part and open the box, they're going to say, sorry, I don't want that part. I can't resell it. I'm not going to take it back from you. So speaking on parts, I don't think I put it in there. Um, you need to have an account with a parts vendor. Whether it's a cash account or a credit account, you need to build up an account that you can um, get what they call wholesale pricing. When I go to Marcone and I put in a part number of a part that I want, I can see what my cost is and they tell me okay your cost is thirty two fifty but retails forty eight dollars so that's what I sell it to the customer for plus my labor so you make a small amount of money on the markup of the part if the customer didn't believe you why that part forty eight dollars man I buy it from Marcone here call them here's the part number when they call Marcone Marcone says do you have an account no I don't have uh, what's the part number this is your price forty eight dollars so there is a wholesale and a retail to the parts. If you go in and just buy the parts over the counter and don't open up an account, you will never get that discount on those parts so you can make a few dollars when you're selling the part. Now, the discount that you get with Marcone is also dependent on the volume of parts that you purchase from them. If you only spend $100 with a month with them, you're not going to get the biggest discount. You'll get a discount but you won't get the biggest discount. If you spend $1,000 a month or $10,000 a month, your discounts will be greater because you're buying higher volume. That's like going to Costco or BJ's and, and buying food from them. That's like a wholesale club because they make money by selling in volume. So um, signage and uniforms. Um, you know, you want to have signage, uh, you want to have business cards, you want to have some sort of uniform when you go into a customer's house you want to look professional and you want them to continue to see that name you want to see the name on your truck you want to see the name on your business card you want to see them the name on your hat your your shirt if those of you who live up north where the weather gets cold get a matching jacket and have it embroidered with your company logo as well so if you're wearing a jacket over your uniform your jacket is your uniform you want people to get familiar with your name so you do a service for them. It may be a year or two before they call you back or six months from now they're talking to a friend. Oh, yeah, I had Joe's Appliance out there. and Man, what was, their, what was their number? You know, what was their name? You know, you want them to remember who you were. So that first time you go into the home, you have to sell yourself and you have to make, that, make sure that customer remembers the service you gave them. Um, business cards, invoices, and software. When I first started my company, I had worked for Sears for five years. I've worked for Best Buy. A lot of you probably know Best Buy. 
I work for another company. It's more local called Brandsmart. It was similar to a Best Buy electronics uh, and appliance and home electronics kind of store. Um, you know that when when we worked for them, I carried a paper invoice and took that into the house and I wrote everything down with a ticket. And back then, you know, we didn't have the computers. I started doing appliance service for Sears in 1983. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have computers. Everything was done in paper. If it rained, if it was hot and sweaty, my arms sweated and smeared the numbers on the paper. If your handwriting's not good, you can't read the model number, you can't order the part. These things, as far as doing paper, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, paper's going by the wayside. Everything's electronic now. There are still a lot of old school people, but you want to start thinking about software and what types of software do you want to manage your business. Um, and getting with a software, a computer, laptop, tablet, or, and a printer. You know, they sell small little printers you can keep in your vehicle that are even Bluetooth, and you just plug them in to, to the lighter or whatever, and from your phone or your tablet, you can have your software, and you can tell it to print, so you can give the customer a hard copy if they want. But the software has got built-in email capability. If the customer is uh, okay with email receipts, you could just say, well, ma'am, do you want to print it or email receipt? I'd prefer to give you a uh, emailed receipt, and you can send them a, a receipt by email. Um, next is a company number and a fax. When me and my partner had started our business, we started using our cell phones for service, and customers were calling us um, and asking us for service on our personal cell phones. I was in the middle of my class teaching, and I'm getting customers calling me, uh, I need service on my Frigidaire washer. I paid a student, I said, listen, I'm gonna give you $10 an hour, here's my phone. When people call, I need you to take the call for me because I gotta teach, I can't, I can't do it. But that goes back to the time frame. You know, if you're using your own personal cell phone, do you want people to call, have calling you after five or calling you on the weekends when you're on your own personal time? And do you want to be accepting those calls? So your company number or fax is a good way you can keep track of some of this stuff. What I ended up doing when we started our business, our two main phone numbers were our cell phones, phone numbers when we started. We made those landlines and bought new phones. Because the numbers blew up so much, we weren't able to keep control of them. As far as a fax, we don't use a paper fax either. We use a company called Rapid Fax. It's, it's an electronic e-fax. And um, you can send and receive fax from the website. When they send a fax, it emails you, letting you know there's a fax there. And you go on the site and you download it and print it if you want. If you want to send something by fax, let's say I wanted to this page here and I wanted to send this page to someone by fax I can um, screenshot it save it as a file attach it as a file to to a fax number and tell rapid fax to send that fax to someone else I don't need a physical fax machine I only need a printer if I want to print out what they send me or I could just save it in digital form like an email on my phone on my phone or computer uh, tools for the job. A lot of people want to go out there and buy those snap-on tools or Matco tools or, or some of these expensive tools. Yes, quality tools make jobs easier, but having the right tool for the job is more important than having the best tool for the job. You know, um, I've started with Harbor Freight stuff. They have this one... Uh, set of bits magnetic bits you put in your nut driver that got torque bits they got the hole in them for, for microwaves you got all these different bits and use one screwdriver handle instead of having to buy 20 different handles the less things you have to carry in your tool bag when you go into someone's house the better now you're gonna need a socket set for example if you're doing a washing machine or a compressor that may be bolted down but you don't need to carry that socket set in your daily tool bag don't make your bag so big that you're coming into someone's house with a suitcase full of stuff it, it, that's not needed 
You need the basic can tools, nut drivers. Uh, you can use the magnetic bit ones, uh, screwdrivers, maybe some pliers, needle nose pliers, uh, a multimeter, and some other tools like that just to get you in and out of the house. If you're doing a transmission job or doing other jobs, you have a toolbox in the truck that has those specialty tools, spanner wrenches, uh, stuff like that. Now, something, you know, after I type this up, emergency and a backup plan. Um, the other day, uh, you know, we just got hit by that, uh, that storm ETA and it wasn't a, a big physical storm, but it was a wet storm. We had over a foot of water on some roads, um, and our vehicles could not drive through. So we had to basically cancel a bunch of guys service calls. And now my guys in Tampa are, are closed for tomorrow. And we had to schedule anybody that was already scheduled for tomorrow and push them off till Friday because that storm's now going through that part of the state. Um, but the other day, we also had a power outage. I thought ahead before hurricane season, and I bought a, I bought a generator. But I didn't think that the power outage was going to happen on a regular day. What happened, a car ran into a power line not too far from the office and knocked the power out of my office for about three hours. My phones are what they call IP-based phones. My phones are internet-based. My computers, my everything was down. My business was shut down. None of my employees could call the office. Customers couldn't call. I couldn't order parts. I couldn't do anything. I had the generator, sent one of my guys to the hardware store and have him buy five 50-foot-long extension cords and power strips and I had cords running all over the floor in my office so I can get these computers up and running. And luckily, me and one of my office managers turns our phone on as a hotspot. And we used our cell phones for internet for the people in the office to do their work. So that made me think, what would I do in case of an emergency? I have an electrician come out and he put an electrical outlet outside the building and had special outlets wired to that one panel so that when I use the generator all my computers are set up I have lights in the office I have air conditioning in the office and I can still run business if there is a power outage um, yeah I did I did say Adrian we did use our cell phones for for that but what I did buy and for some reason we didn't use it for so long I think about two or three months ago I canceled it I had something called a hotspot. Now, we use Verizon for our tablets. I bought a hotspot and put it in the office and said, okay, well, if, if Comcast, our, our, our cable company, goes out, the, our computers can connect to this Wi-Fi. Um, well, when I had the power outage, I had already disconnected that Wi-Fi device, and I still didn't have the Internet. So these are things that you need to start thinking. What happens in an emergency? What happens if you have no power? What happens if your phones go down? Do you have a phone company that manages your phones for you? Um, there's a, a lot of things you have to do uh, when you're running a business and when you have employees underneath you. You're the one who has to make all these decisions. How am I going to do this? So if you think about these things now as you're building your business, when you run into an emergency, uh, you're a little more prepared than I was. <laughs> so these are some of the things that you need when you start a business. Um, the next screen is software, and I'm going to actually show you this live. Rossware.net is the company, and what you're seeing is the main screen interface on this software. This software has a place for you to put in all your customers information and these are called call sheets now when a customer calls one of the call takers in the office will fill this information out they will get the the customers name address phone numbers like you see down here in the bottom left hand corner um, they're gonna put washer Westinghouse and they're gonna put it in here the description and right here where it says date and time this is when they go ahead and actually choose a date that the technician's going to come out and go to a customer's home. So we're open. 
and if you see I have two versions of it open I actually have a third one here and the way we know the difference from them uh, let me just go through this one little prompt here uh, you notice how they're different colors I have yellow red and green these are different areas the yellow one is the north part of Florida where we were mainly in Jacksonville Florida uh, right now I don't have technicians in that area so I'm not using it but I actually paid this company for three different versions of this software so um, you guys could use one but the nice thing uh, about this software is it has a built-in map I'm gonna show you guys this map this is uh, Wednesday's uh, route and this is up in in middle Florida this would be uh, near Tampa Orlando where Disney World is for those of you who are not too familiar with Florida it's about the middle of Florida what you can see here these are all my technicians um, and their schedule of calls for that day I even got more a uh, little bit further down here um, today we had 96 jobs scheduled we had to reschedule some of them because some of the bad weather started to come through so an average technician is going to run about eight to ten calls a day every single one of these is a service call and if you look at the way it's broken down you see the ELEW and then this ELEW means Electrolux warranty and the second is the customers uh, name their zip code it's scheduled for AM notice that some of them say AM and some of them have time 8 to 12 one of the things we notice when we created a service ticket was that most of our calls we schedule with the time we tell the customer listen we're gonna be there between 8 and 12 or we're gonna be there between 12 30 and 5 um, and our technician will call you 30 minutes before going now when we were going out there with a part we wanted to have a way how do we like separate the tickets and know if the tickets a parts call or not so we put a.m. or p.m. instead of the time frame uh, just to let us know when we look at the ticket like this a.m. call if I mouse over it this is the ticket number three seven one four eight it's a frigidary refrigerator when I click on it look here it brings up the customer service ticket I know it's Electrolux warranty dispatch number means Electrolux actually sent the call to me I did not get the call from the customer they called Electrolux Electrolux used a third-party company I'm not going to be able to talk about them today but they used a third-party company where they input the service ticket on that company's website and then this software here every five minutes checks that website for new orders and downloads it into my software when I complete this job especially a warranty or extended contract job I can complete the ticket on this same software and when it's done and marked here as completed in this column here it will upload the call back to that third party site and make it so that company will pay me for this job so I, this is the customers information I'm gonna like edit some of this stuff out before I post it online I don't want to uh, put customers information now if I click on Frigidaire here I right click on it we have a place for the model and serial number uh, the brands purchase date I know that this was purchased on June 15 20 and the customer has a one-year warranty now if you notice it's both in here and on the ticket you see a little picture camera called quick pick they came up with this software called quick pick which used to run as a separate software now it's built into the main software every one of my technicians carries a tablet I had iPads which worked very well but we came factory authorized for Samsung and Samsung had software that would not work on the iPad it have to only work on a Samsung tablet so we switched over to a tablet in the mobile version of this software technicians see something a little bit different than this but they see all this ticket information and if you look here on the right hand side I click on it you can see the very first line at the top says uh, Fortunus can you mute your microphone please Let me, just, let me just mute him for a second. Okay, so you can see in the top of this ticket, this ticket was created on November 4th, 2020, 